This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give a what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 667 Tuesdays. We've been talking about the professionalized wrestling. I'm at Sorgatron, Mike Sorg on the Twitter. No, reverse that. Switch it. Sorgatron on the Twitter. Air at Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh? Question mark? I don't know. I was looking at palm trees this morning, and I'm very jet lagged so this is going to be a great show. Anyways, we got the crew with us. We got we got the, uh, the man with the biggest diploma in the room, Mad Mike from Beacon, New York. Uh, I'm, I'm Mad Mike, first of my name, Lord of the of the Lake of Beacon and uh, protector of the Duchess County. There you go. Ooh. There you go. Yeah. Also with us from the Pittsburgh, uh, with the from the Pittsburgh area uh, of the Tiny Shutter Podcast, and with a uh, lot less, um, a, a lot less depressing ending than Game of Thrones is Dave Potter. <laughs> hey, Zork. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, that. But you know, at least um, there's not going to be a big tub of mayo running in at the last minute after I do all the work to take all the glory. <laughs> wow <laughs> oh we were really angry we are really angry about game of thrones <laughs> this, this week great i this love this great i love this. is this show gonna be about like re- <laughs> about wrestling or just wrestling type anger versus game of thrones i don't know right now <laughs> the night is young my client bram stark First uh, of his name. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Who cares? <laughs> oh, geez. But Brand. anyways. Brand. Also, we have a very special guest with us tonight. We have a professor in the studio. Not like Professor Tanaka or, or, or anything like that. Uh, we have Professor Buzzkill of the Professor Buzzkill podcast with us in the studio. That's right. I'm here on the Buzzkill couch enjoying listening to you guys. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> but it's a, it's a hell of a lot of fun. There's some, if, it's, if it involves mayonnaise, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> and we were just, uh, I don't want to get too much, on the After Dark, we introduced you to an implement of plunder over there. Yes, yes. Apparently the Kendo stick. or the Yes, not, not Marie Kendo, or whatever her name is. But it's, <laughs> the, oh, the oh my God, death. a Marie Kendo stick. That's, yeah. uh, <laughs> yes. Well, we got into that in the After Dark for oh, uh, exclusively yes. oh. for our Patreon supporters. Oh, there we go. So you can check that out at the Pocky Club, uh, Professor. Uh, <laughs> professor, I, I, you, you were telling me uh, uh, our, our namesake, Mayhem. Yes. Yes. yes, mayhem has actually a very important role in history, legal history. I don't mean to, you know, everybody to turn off right now, but it means a lot. It meant, I should say, it meant a lot more than what most people think. In fact, it means mutilation and bodily harm. Oh, that it just doesn't it, mean, you know, getting extra pepperoni on your pizza from Broadway Pizza. It means, <laughs> it means actually doing severe bodily injury to people. And if you were accused way back when of conducting mayhem then you were really then you really went to the pokey for a very long time so the me, most words have their meaning sort of pumped up over the centuries but mayhem has actually kind of calmed down and people don't mean it the way they used to uh, unfortunately i think we do mean it that way still. well uh, don't, I, don't forget who has the stick <laughs> right? i'm talking about bodily harm had someone on here who goes by the name mutilator Oh yeah, well he yeah. he swore mm-hmm. off wrestling for a couple months. So, uh, yeah. By, by yeah. the way, Sorg, uh, Toru Tanaka was actually a professor. Yes, of martial arts. Oh, that, that that's what they that's what they called him. I I I thought that was accurate. I double checked on the Wikipedia to make sure. I bet it is. I bet that is correct. But anyways, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com where you can find links to subscribe to us in podcast and video form or look us up on your favorite platform and check out some of our other side shows that we have. 
uh, over there and some uh, great articles about the great uh, Matt Carlins, including our Mayhem Mania history. And uh, you can also ask your Google Home to play the show or Amazon Echo to play Wrestling Mayhem Show on TuneIn or Google Podcasts or whatever you have attached to your voice device. Uh, like I have <laughs> your voice. <laughs> Voice device. Your voice device. That sounds like another punishment. <laughs> <laughs> you can also drop us an email at Good Times, Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow dot com or four one two two zero six WMS zero. Tweet us at Mayhem Show and hit us up on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page and group. A lot of great discussions happen over on the Wrestling Mayhem Show group. Sometimes we learn what our wrestler name will be. <laughs> so um, uh -oh. I think. Oh, what was mine? It was. It wasn't that exciting. Anyways, we are here live every Tuesday on Facebook Live on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page. Also, a couple other places. Uh, but if you are checking us out on one of those other platforms like uh, Twitch or, or Twitter or anything like that, please get to <laughs> um, <laughs> Brian Crawford saying that he really just confused his Echo. I believe on your Echo, you do have to say, listen to Wrestling Mayhem Show on TuneIn, I think. But also, it depends on your skill sets on there. Uh, what was I getting at? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook. If you're anywhere else, please come over to the Facebook page. That is where we are trying to pay attention to the chat and having the conversation. But feel free to watch on any of those platforms as well. Um, also, uh, thank you to our Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. First of all, our friends at the fan of the show, $1 level, Bo Diggity! Woo! Ed Burke, Bobby F. J. Town, Tina Keys, and the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's Foundation for Podcast Betterment and Team Hammer Fist. I really need to switch those up for flow. Pocket Club, $5 level. They're going to learn about uh, Professor Buskill, learning about the Kabuki <laughs> stick. Uh, our friend Bradley Brothers, Doc Remedy, Dave Potter, Kyle Turner, and Daniel Towery. Our friend at the Pizza Club, $10 level, Ryan Clark. And at thirteen dollars, by the way, uh, I don't know. I didn't check if that thirteen meant something. Uh, and also, our friend at the manager level at Occupy Pro Wrestling. It was great to hang out with uh, the great Alex Cars out there uh, for uh, Rise with an I. I went to with him, and I got to meet the, meet the great uh, Kevin Harvey uh, behind Rise uh, for a moment and have a, a, a quick discussion with him. So that was a really cool connection. Uh, thanks, 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 Alex, for uh, hooking that up. Uh, while I was uh, out there on my Mayhem Across America tour. Maybe I'll talk about that a little bit later in the show if we have some time. In the meantime, uh, Mike, I wanted to, uh, we like I said, we did a little bit of a Facebook Live last night here uh, before we get to the history lesson here with uh, the professor. Uh, so I wanted to pose this to you guys and, uh, and uh, Potter uh, as well and you guys in the chat room. Um, we've been really, really down on WWE product, of course, in the last few weeks. Uh, that might be an understatement. Uh, so I see an eye roll from Dave over there. Uh, but uh, I watched uh, alone in my hotel room with some uh, teriyaki madness, uh, some mo money in the bank on, on delay because time zones. And I really enjoyed the show. I think um, there was a lot of great delivery there. Uh, we can talk about, of course, some of the uh, results out of that, of course. Uh, but generally top to bottom, um, even to the point where Barry Corbin came out, like, oh, I'll skip this match. And then I forgot he was in Money in the Bank. Um, but uh, so so for all that we've been like kind of uh, uh, railing against like Raw and SmackDown, still the product that you're paying for on WWE Network, I think has been very solid between that, between our Becky Lynch 24-7s, between your NXTs and your 205 Lives even have been really, really good. And I wanted to separate a little bit because I think we, we did lose Mutilator Larry for a little bit, too. Uh, I think he was unhappy with what was happening with WWE and canceled his subscription. But I think we need to separate that a little bit, right? Because it's a different kind of product going on. Mm -hmm. Your yeah, thoughts? Like, um, I mean, I, I, I said this last night. That's like not going to see Avengers Endgame because you don't like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Right. Like to me, it does. They're different products. Like you're getting completely different stuff with the network because a the pay per views are basically just matches, mm -hmm. which is what you I showed may, up for. Yeah, you may not like the outcomes of certain matches where uh, sentient jars of mayonnaise can climb ladders, but the matches overall were really good at Money in the Bank. Oh, yeah. Like, the AJ and Seth Rollins match, if you're not a fan of that, I don't know what the fuck mm -mm. to tell you. Mm -mm. 
<laughs> no, I don't a... know what the hell to tell you. That's probably the best match I've seen all year so far. And I'm including, like, I think the only thing that's come close is the Gargano, Adam Cole, two out of three falls. Right. Absolutely. Um, no, I, I think that's the case. Uh, uh, partner, what do, you, what do you think about what's yeah. going on between what's your fallout from, you know, Sunday night? No, I mean, honestly, and I hate to say it, but I made it until the men's money in the bank match. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I hate to say I, I'm old mm-hmm. and I got tired and I went listen, to sleep. Listen, some of us need naps <laughs> before our wrestling, before we, we take in three, four, five yeah. hours of pro, pro wrestling that yeah, WWE exactly. tries to put us through. Exactly. I mean, let's, so let's be I, honest about this. We yeah, got the gray hairs. Oh, no, I enjoy I like it. And the difference, it's almost the difference of saying, wow, that was a great like watching a movie or watching a TV show saying, wow, that is a great actor. That's a great actress. Yeah. Storyline sucked, mm-hmm. but, but that performance they gave was amazing. Like, like I said, AJ versus, um, Seth, Seth, Seth that was an amazing match. Mm-hmm. Why should I care about it? Other than being an amazing match. Eh, that's something different. Mm-hmm. That's what I think is missing. And the fact that, the ending of Money in the Bank led to Boombox. Bra, uh, bra. We had some great moments. Boom, yes, Boombox. Yeah, uh, Boombox. So, somebody tweeted tweeted, "We don't deserve the gifts that Brock Lesnar is giving oh, us." Oh God, no! But I mean, oh no, no, we do. <laughs> <laughs> For what he's getting paid, yeah, we deserve. It. He just—he's just a multi-million-dollar gift machine. Well, given the fact that, I mean, that is the perfect thing for him, though, Mm -hmm. because supposedly they're going to come out next week and say who they're going to fight. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Suppose, supposedly. Mm -hmm. okay, but it's like, oh, will Brock show up? Won't Brock show up? Who knows? They could tease it while always, you know, he's for the next seven, eight months. He's up in his farm somewhere. Not even getting away, getting away from his family, but that's a perfect thing for him because he can be far away, and they can just tease. And every so often, you could tease Heyman pulling out, mm-hmm. and that would be good. That they way, that he's that not way. on the show. He's mm-hmm. not on the show. Wait, so the what? What they had? What you saying? Heyman came, Heyman came out on SmackDown tonight. Just him, and he he did with, a thing. with the briefcase, like Heyman was gonna fucking cash in. Oh jeez. <laughs> Like, but and then it was and then it was a distraction thing because then Dolph Ziggler came back in the de- oh, okay that's the when that happened yeah mm. so get ready for Dolph Kofi number hold on Sorg what number show is this six six seven yes okay so get ready for Dolph versus Kofi number five thousand six hundred thirty two as there's some fuzzy math but I'll go with it oh uh, uh, no I and, and again the, they'll be they'll be good matches too great yeah matches. oh yeah they'll be great matches don't care about them but we'll, they'll we'll, be great matches we'll, we'll see what happens we'll see if um we'll see if Dolph has uh recovered from his uh Pittsburgh countdown incident last week last year <laughs> um I think no. I think I think he just he he may have just had a breakdown after that cuz you visibly saw him say what are they doing sure. um so do you want to hear me write a better story in two minutes? Uh, here we go. Here do? we go. All right. Um, so they also had Big E uh, get injured tonight. Oh. He was, atta- he was attacked backstage. Again? Yeah. Uh, and Big E immediately said it was Owens. It was Kevin Owens at that. Which, you know. Oh, we got a little bit of glitch here. Uh-oh. Oh, you're back. Okay. You're back. All right. Um, and Big E said that it was Kevin Owens that attacked him. Because, you know. He's Kevin Owens. He's going to attack people. Mm-hmm. But I find it coincidental that Big E goes out with an injury just on his night back. Woods takes him to the hospital and Dolph Ziggler returns to attack Kofi. Mm-hmm. Dolph Ziggler being the one that brought Big E to the main roster. Mm-hmm. Ooh. I'm thinking that we're going to have a Big E heel turn because mm. Dolph was one of the only people that checked on him while he was injured. Meanwhile, Kofi and Woods are on Raw and SmackDown, replacing him with Kevin Owens. Maybe they bonded over both wanting to get at Mike, uh, Becky Lynch's mom. I mean, who wouldn't? 
she is a snack. That was. <laughs> It's the first time I've ever. That was said one that of the tweets, before. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh. no, that oh, yeah. absolutely was. That absolutely. Mark was. that on the calendar. Jeez. Yes. All right. Well, hey, but I- but that that's that's my two minute booking for a better storyline than they're ever going to give us. <laughs> well, guys, I want to talk. We'll talk about a little bit more of WWE, and I want to get to the twenty four seven belt and and those kinds of no, things, and maybe no. there's a, this little show. <laughs> <laughs> there's this little show called Double or Nothing that's happening this weekend. Um, but there's another little show that's happening here in Pittsburgh, and uh, actually, uh, we will be uh, a part of that here with uh, IndieWrestling.us and uh, Angel Gate Wrestling, our friends over there. And that is not how that works. Try, sorry, trying to pull up <laughs> our next segment here, and I can't spell things. Anyways, our friends at IndieWrestling.us are happy to kick off our iPay-Per-View series with Angel Gate this Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. If it can't be in McKeesport, uh, PA, to catch the action live, I know we have a lot of you guys on the West Coast, in the middle, and, and all over the place. Mike up in New York, uh, and even some international. Uh, you can join us uh, for that. Uh, it, it's your chance to see Raylan, Christina Marie, Queen Aminata, uh, Lady Frost, Ronnie Nicole, Casey Spinelli, and so much more. Follow Angel Gate on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and at Angel Gate PWX on the Twitter uh, for more details. And you can also get more information on the uh, the iPay-Per-View uh, uh, heading over on IndieWrestling.us. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Our first kickoff iPay-Per-View. Uh, these these uh, uh, girls have been turning in some great shows lately uh, with that that you can check out on um, the Pro Wrestling Network and over on VOD at IndieWrestling.us. US. So looking forward to that and uh and uh looking forward to see uh some of these girls in action who Raylan, for instance, I just saw in action uh just uh last Thursday for the world uh I'm sorry, of women of wrestling taping in LA. So really cool to see her in a kind of a different setting out there and uh, uh we're seeing her here in Angel Gate too. So, Professor Buzzkill, you're with us here tonight, and we're getting into some history. You were joining yes, us a little bit. Show. Yeah. That's what yeah. you do over there at ProfessorBuzzkill.com, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, a great history podcast uh, as well. <laughs> we hope so. We hope what, so. What, what's the quick line on uh, what you guys are doing over there on that show? Busting myths and taking names. That's right. And all you wrestlers out there should know about taking names. You know, you're trying. we're trying to get people to own up to what they do. Mm-hmm. And so if they don't own up to it, we write them down. So we wanted to give you some time. Let's let's talk about a little, little bit of wrestling history. I mean, we we we. I mean, my wrestling history goes back to the eighties. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, but there's a lot out You're there. An old old man. And, we're, and a lot of us get to explore so much thanks to the WWE Network and things like that these days. Well, does the WWE Network ever show like documentaries on Gorgeous George and people like that? We have not seen Gorgeous George. We have seen. That's fascinating. Uh, we, we usually doesn't go back that far. There's not a lot of footage that. Yeah. Is, oh well, that's um, true. Yeah, I didn't think of that. Easily, yeah. That's easily digestible. Yeah. Well, yeah. That, and know, also, they just don't have the rights to them. Yeah. Well, that doesn't mm. surprise me because Gorgeous George was born in 1915. Wow. So he'd be 104. Missy, is that right? I so got the math right on that. Oh, sorry. What's What's the math? Sorry, I was. Gorgeous George was born in 1915. Does that make him 104 if he was still alive? I think so. Right? Yes. Well, okay. Yeah. Well, so so yes. I don't think you need any rights to to the films, but actually finding it on film would be difficult. Would, would be very difficult because I don't think people bothered to film. There was, however, there are, however, a lot of media historians who claim that the two people who brought television really into the sort of promotional age, the people who 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 sold more TVs than anyone else were Milton Berle and Gorgeous George. And Gorgeous George was a very flamboyant wrestler, started all sorts of things, influenced later in his life, influenced people like Muhammad Ali in order to get them to promote the, their, their fights ahead of time by being extra braggadocious and by, by sort of outraging the audience. And that means, of course, the audience watches. And George, uh, sorry, gorgeous George would say that it doesn't matter if they hate me and they want to see me lose. They're watching, and that's what brings the money in. So it seems to me uh, an awful lot of what's going on in wrestling nowadays comes from that vibe, if you will. You know, the idea that we're going to make this as 
media friendly, first of all, media friendly as we can, and as interesting as we can to someone who might not be technically interested in wrestling. Mm -hmm. uh, because what was wrestling before that? You know, we, we were talking about, you know, somebody was born in 915, or 1915. Um, like that was more, it was probably growing out of the carny, you know, yes, roots that's right. At that yeah. time, right? Well, no, it would still be in the carny roots in 1915, but. You know, apart from Greco-Roman wrestling in ancient times, mm -hmm. you 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 don't get wrestling that 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 is on a larger scale until you have multi, uh, until you have modern media, and that would be again like we've talked about in other shows the, the telegraph and widespread distribution of newspapers, and so in the twenties, thirties, forties, and fifties, when you had people having wrestling matches, who then come up. And start showing up in capes and dyed blonde hair and hair that they've grown, in fact, enormously long, and showing up with entourages of of women and people fanning them like Egyptian pharaohs. This really, you know, creates a tremendous atmosphere that attracts people. And of course, wrestling, at least in, in those days, was inexpensive. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to. Get a whole fleet of actors. You didn't have to put on a Broadway show. You just had to have a few, either, well, back in those days, a, 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 a big enough venue. But also when television starts to become, it starts in its infancy, you only need a couple of cameras and you only need one or two to be showing gorgeous George coming in with his entourage. Mm -hmm. So a very, very visual presentation. Very time. visual. And I think that's the key to his, his contribution to the, to the development of wrestling. And then to the to development of, of television media mm -hmm. is is the visual. I, I'm actually uh, poking a little bit at, at a Gorgeous George. I didn't realize Gorgeous George George was in a movie. Oh yes, yes, yes. Oh yes. yeah, yeah. And and funny thing about that movie though, I've forgotten the name of it now. Uh, uh, it's Alias the Champ. Yeah, that's right. The movie does okay, but it doesn't do nearly as well as people thought it would because of his two things. One because He's so popular in person, mm -hmm. and you need you need the kind of whole atmosphere to see it. And then, for some strange reason, television is able to convey that atmosphere more than movies. So mm -hmm. it, it it's sort of like it falls in between those two two high points in his career. Well, I, I've always heard like the difference between the television like television star TV stars and movie stars mm -hmm. is movie stars you have to travel out of your house to go experience exactly, them. Exactly, yeah. Exactly. While TV stars, you're welcoming them into your home, basically. Right, like, right. Yeah, so that's probably why he had more of an impact that way. Yeah, and I can't. I also can't stress enough the fact that it doesn't cost much money at that in those days to put it on TV. Because, uh, you know, TV in the early days, a lot of it was live, literally live, mm -hmm. and they didn't have the money to, you know, this was still kind of a, well, do we want to invest in this or not? Well, gorgeous George was cheap programming and it became a very very popular and became a you know he became a national phenomenon if you're curious alias the champ is on youtube it's an hour and eight minute movie oh i didn't know that on youtube okay of course it, it was well, probably out of uh copyright i would imagine oh I, well, i'm sure it is so I'm nobody's sure it taking it down it's a 1949 movie yeah and uh, I am playing it right now. I'm not going to put it up there just in case. But <laughs> um, and this is, and I'm, I am curious if this is maybe possibly one of the earliest uh, iterations of, of pro wrestling in a movie. Um, it was not. Um, um, it was. It was not Highlander as I once thought. I no, don't know because no. I know El Santo had movies too. I don't know. What no, of called. course. Yeah, they, yeah. They probably they probably did too. So well um, if, uh, where where pro wrestling is really considered the main focus of the plot right you had people yeah. in the background uh, right. in the i'm i'm watching a wrestling match as part el of Sant right. el santo yeah. el yeah. santo stuff was in like the 60s so right well this was 1949 yeah, yeah. With gorgeous so, right. george so um but again with that different culture in 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 mexico mm. i would not be mm. surprised mm. if there are early mm. earlier mm. Uh, movies than that although I, well, yeah, i'm curious how the film industry was in the 40s at that point had it filtered down at that point? Had what? Had it filtered down to Mexico to make their own stuff at that point? Oh, sure. There was all kinds of stuff made in Mexico. There was all kinds of stuff shot in Mexico that mm -hmm. is really supposed to be about Arizona, really supposed to be about Texas or whatever, because it was cheaper to do, mm -hmm. as it is even now. But yeah, that that's the first first you know again focusing making the focus of the plot wrestling rather than making it 
res- wrestling or even boxing being incidental to the plot. Because mm-hmm. after all, we have famous movies like um, Here's Here Comes Mr. Jordan, which is the, the original the, uh, of the Heaven Can Wait movie, and the, the first version. And that was about the, that version, uh, Here Comes Mr. Jordan, is about boxing. And there are a few boxing movies. But again, it isn't a big thing until really Gorgeous George is able to build up the sort of daily conversation about wrestling. Do you really, can you believe what this guy just actually, what he said about his upcoming opponent? Blah, 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 blah. And then Muhammad Ali turns this into the same thing in the 50s, late 50s and 60s by saying, Sonny Liston, you know, he, he says all these things I'm going to, I'm going to beat him. He doesn't say beat him into next week, but he makes all these exaggerated claims before the match, right? And that builds up the, the, the fervor for the match itself. The first kind of a uh, uh, water cooler yeah, talk around pro exactly. wrestling. Yeah, 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 and and water cooler pre match, which is an amazing difference. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, uh, there is a, there's a, there is a little bit. If you go on YouTube, you can go down a little bit of a rabbit hole too. I'm also seeing a yeah. George George versus Woody Strode for uh, wrestling from Hollywood in 1950s television uh, yeah. over there too. So I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff. I am I, 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 again. I'm I'm scrubbing through this movie, and there is a point where. Uh, not gorgeous George. There's another wrestler against a boxer. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> and of to... course, they did it with the animals and mm-hmm. things like that, and trained bears and things like that too. But it's well, a... we still do that today. So yeah, 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 sure. But you yeah. want to know where it starts? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, again, that kind of carny atmosphere, right? So it's the carny atmosphere, yeah. and and again, it's the it's the one of the things that makes carnivals so. Remember, the carnivals used to be traveling carnivals, mm-hmm. and makes them so successful is that. You know, it's one week till the carnival arrives. It's three days till the carnival arrives. It's the it's the pre promotion that gets right. things up and going, and that's what Gorgeous George was able to do and, with wrestling. And, and it was a very traveling oriented right uh, situation where right. they can go from one territory to the next and right, right, right. kind of do the same match over and over again because oh was absolutely no, there was absolutely. no kind of connective tissue to say you know nobody was driving from uh, uh, you know Memphis to. To Nashville to see Jerry Lawler and matches. You know, That's right. Like Jerry Lawler is much much later, of course, but you know even then to to cross that over. Well, and another example, sort of a frivolous one, is Gorgeous George marries his wife, and they decide when he gets married uh, in the forties, he decides to have the the wedding as an in ring ceremony. Oh, and he has that. You know, he gets married in the ring, and it proved to be so popular at that episode that they kept repeating it. So he's been married. Mm-hmm. He, you know, he's one of the few people who's been married about forty times. Because <laughs> always to the same woman and always in the same sort of. Place. Oh wait, so so they, I, they, I thought she was on the WWE Hall of Fame and she told us she told a story like that. Oh really? Yeah, it could, yeah that could George very well George be. Gorgeous George is yeah. inducted in the Hall of Fame, and I know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it was his wife that accepted it. So, yeah, so, because she 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 outlives him by a long time. He dies yeah. relatively wow. young. Yeah, he he died in uh sixty eight. I think I saw. Yeah, yeah, uh, wow. something like that. So so basically, so you're telling me the wedding. Became a traveling roadshow. It became that their wedding became their wedding yeah. became a traveling roadshow, right? Of yeah. sorts, and of course okay, they build now. it up before they build it up before, and like I said, yeah. that was the key that the the the, the early publicity. Did they have somebody interrupt it like we always have with weddings on yeah. all wrestling now? Because <laughs> uh, yeah, if, <laughs> if anyone knows any reason why this man and woman shouldn't be united in marriage, let's stand now or forever hold his peace. And Body slam. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, I, I don't know, but that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, maybe something we should return to the marriage. Ceremony. Oh no, they still do that every once in a while. It's still <laughs> happening. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. Trust me. Trust oh me. yeah, and uh, mm-hmm. all any kind of permutation you can even imagine. For. No, yeah. but I mean, in churches, in, in in at the in front of the justice of the peace, we should have this sort of you know a, uh, you know a, 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 like a mayhem aspect. Yes, of the yes, marriage ceremony, Ma- yes. marriage and mayhem. Um, and, and remembrance for for uh, poor Al Wilson. Yeah, oh, well, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> so there's been, there's been, there's been a, a death set funerals. There have been, uh, it, there's been some really. There have interesting... been dark funerals where yes. the where the bride is tied to a cross. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, oh yeah, one time. Yeah, we're talking. Mm-hmm. We're talking about Monday Night Raw. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're talking about things that happen. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so well, you anyway, know, uh, there there have been fake gay weddings. Yes, there have been. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, there are been, been weddings to get green cards. There's, there's yeah. been a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's always like everything else. There's a there's a beginning to it. There's an origin. Someone has to think of it, and this is where it started. 
Man, we should have, man. I, I need to employ you to do to, to, to help bust wrestling history myths. Oh. <laughs> mm. There's a lot of them. There's I mean, a lot of them. an awful lot, yeah. <laughs> and I think some are out there doing that that were there. But you never know. You never know. But no. I mean, there's there's a bunch of weird stuff. Like I mean, you're doing it with 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 the Churchills and the and the George Washingtons and and, and that kind of history. But mm-hmm. there's also a lot of like people honestly think the Ultimate Warrior died in the '90s and was replaced by another Ultimate Warrior. Well, there you go. Like <laughs> the thing that I heard on the playground growing up, I still hear at wrestling shows today. <laughs> Well, there was also the myth of Paul McCartney died in '68, and then he was replaced by a lookalike, and that's why <laughs> that's why on the cover of Abbey Road he's depicted being barefoot crossing uh, the street with the other Beatles. Oh, it's a sort of supposedly an old Sicilian sign of death as being barefoot, but it, I think it's, it, it's it, all ridiculous. Does that lead to the uh, reverse Paul is dead? That that's what the Paul is dead thing is. is okay, the, the Paul is dead, and yeah, although you mean reversing the record. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that's where all that comes from. <laughs> so there you go. Conspiracy theories everywhere. They are everywhere. Yes. Well, Professor, thank you for coming and 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 uh, giving us enlightening our crew here it, this evening. Well, it's been great. And now that I know that there's a YouTube version of the movie or a YouTube clip of the movie, I'm going to go watch it. I've never actually seen it. Uh, I'm sure it's not exactly the most gripping. Movie with not the best written plot ever. <laughs> well, hey, but, it's but 1949. You never know. Hey, to be fair, if that's the case, then you understand what it's like to be a wrestling fan in 2019. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's true. That's true. I can't imagine ending on a better story, except that we're being someone is taking pictures of us as oh good outside the, <laughs> outside the window as we're recording. This happens, and no. I have to say she's laughing at me at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's laughing at me right now. He's laughing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, she's dancing. Yeah, yeah. Laughing oh. and dancing. It's not Dutters, is it? No, it's no. definitely not Dutters. Oh, I was going to ask you Dutters. <laughs> no, her her bare butt is not on the window. Um, yeah. That's how you know it's Dutters. But it's great, Ben, and th- thank you so much for having me because uh, I've I've learned a lot as well. Fantastic, um, including what a could uh, a kendo stick is. Hey guys. Thank you so much, Professor Buzzkill. Check him out, ProfessorBuzzkill.com. Subscribe, like, rate, review him and our podcast as well uh, uh, and yeah, help everybody out. Uh, so want to give a shout out to somebody else that helps us out and helps feed. Uh, and, and the professor I know was, uh, uh, we, we convinced him to try some and now it's opened the floodgates. Uh, supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Our friends at Slice on Broadway, a Beachview original uh, right here in Beachview, Carnegie, PA, the east end of Pittsburgh and PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. And again, I know many of you are not here in the Pittsburgh area, but we want to support our friends. And and obviously, when we started uh, with them here with us on the show, they had one location right up the road here from our current studio uh, and they have obviously expanded greatly into some awesome locations here in the area but i want you guys to help with their global expansion uh, wherever you are there is probably a broadway avenue nearby mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i want you to take a picture of that sign of broadway avenue wherever that may be and tweet pgh underscore slice on the twitter and tell them you want to slice on your broadway so our unofficial campaign to help the global expansion and uh site development of slice on broadway go check them out slice on broadway.com if you find yourself in pittsburgh if you're doing a little bit of traveling like i have been lately uh mayhem across america and visiting some friends uh come down we'll have a slice go check them out uh carnegie pa is right on the way to the airport or in from the airport however which way you're going Go check them out and thank you to them for supporting the show. We're going to let the professor go because it is a school night, as was mentioned before. <laughs> and we're going to be back with our big question right after this. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Oh. Hi, oh. M- M- Mini rant. Mini rant. So w- we were saying mm-hmm. how the wrestling was good. Yes. But why should we? Do you know what finished up SmackDown tonight? Hmm. Elias versus Roman. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. With distraction from Shane O'Mac that led mm-hmm. to a Drew McIntyre run in. Well, that's the issue, isn't it? We've seen this. We've seen this a million times. I didn't say it was all good. We've seen yeah. it a million times. Now, yeah. I'm not saying it it wasn't done. I'm not saying it wasn't not done well. It was done well, mm. but well, we've that done was it. Roman's last two matches we've done on pay per view. But we've done yeah. it. Yeah. But we've done exactly. it. Exactly. 
Yeah. We, there's, there's nothing new. And speaking of nothing new, uh, Mick Foley, <laughs> God bless his soul. Mick Foley uh-huh. out there trying to make this work. Presented to us on Monday Night Raw this week, the newest title, because we need more belts, in WWE. <laughs> The WWE 24-7. No, this does not mean the owner of the, 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 the title receives a documentary. It means that it is a return to the spirit of the Crash Holly era hardcore championship with the 24-7 role. Uh, comedy ensues. Laugh track. Um, you got Rorschach for a moment there. Anyways, <laughs> but... Uh, you know, for the big question, um, I want to say that it feels like a retread. It feels underwhelming. And I don't want to have that discussion. Instead, we like to help here on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. <laughs> and I want to ask you, the Mayhemers, in the chat room online right now, what would you have made for a new championship instead of the 24-7 title? That we did get this week on Monday Night Raw. And I presume it is carried over to SmackDown. Is that true, Potter? Oh, yes. Yes. In fact, we had our truth in drag. Mm-hmm. We had Carmella trying to help our truth by getting him made up in drag to hide him. Mm-hmm. As our truth said, it's 24 7. That means I hold for 24 plus seven hours, I get to keep this for good. <laughs> Truth may be the only thing that could help this belt. Uh, I am uh, so glad they uh, gave it the truth. I am so happy they gave it the truth. Drake Drake Maverick is trying. Drake oh, Ma- yeah. Drake, oh, yeah. Maverick Drake Maverick is putting yes. in the work. Speaking yeah, of the 24-7. On, we got, on the hunt. On the hunt. We got a cattail drive-by over on camera, too. Uh, <laughs> Drake Maverick is trying to turn himself into Crash Holly. He is. <laughs> Uh, and to the point where he... Did you see the one where he was going through the drive through and asking yep. the, the yes. attendant... Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. the drive through attendant if he has seen uh, Ron Kellings. <laughs> yep. Um, which is really funny because I am blocked by our truth on Twitter. Oh, no. I cannot see the escapades. How did that happen? I'm not sure. There has to be some memorandum to let, have people but unblock they, you that work for they, WWE. I, I mean, is there anyone who you're not blocked by? Xavier Woods. Up at <laughs> Bantha. That's true. Riz. Riz, That's Riz, 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 Riz is very upset about <laughs> Very mad, very mad. But anyways, what title would you have presented or allowed Mick Foley to um, present Monday Night on Raw? Oh, can the option be no title? Because we don't need an extra one? Listen, Vince has come to you and said, we need no more belts. Okay, all right. So if you have to present... Oh, you <laughs> have to... You have to come up with a new title. You're stuck. The boss said so. You have to make this work as best as possible. Okay. Um, your your bonus, uh, uh, your your holiday bonus depends on it. Mixed tag team championships. Mixed tag team championships. Damn, that's a good one. Yeah, I, <laughs> and and the way you'd crown the first, um, the way you crown the first one is you take the the Raw tag team champions and SmackDown tag team champions, mm. and and you split up, you split up. The women's tag team champions. Oh no! You, ha- you have a six-man tag occur. Oh no! Uh huh. Just just temporarily. Uh huh. Just temp- But it's it's mixed tag team wrestling. It's it's intergender. Mm-hmm. It's intergender. So so really the intergender tag team champions. I was that's what that because mixed cha- mixed tag yeah. is the is the tag mixed in, matches same gender. Is tag in tag out right. Mm. So it'd be full intergender. Um. That would be my way of going about this. Okay. That'd be my way of doing okay. it. Uh, Kyle's in the chat room saying the Waffle House title. It's only defended I'm, at Waffle Houses. I and I'm going to add, it's, it's only defended at Waffle Houses after each Raw and SmackDown. Um, I, we have mm. enough promotion on Raw. I don't think we need more. Don't need a title. We uh, we don't need a Secret Life of Pets two championship. Oh, okay. You uh, don't you don't need yeah. a uh, Quality Rentals Internet Television Championship. We don't need a gold bond championship. By the way, real belt in West Virginia with our friends. I'm Carter. sure. Yes. Um. Anyways, uh, <laughs> Dave, I could. 
I see. I kind of like the idea behind the 24 seven title. Mm -hmm. I think the title. And I, I don't want to go after whoever made the title because I'm sure they made it the way Vince told them to make it. It looks cheap as hell. I feel like they redid the, uh, the greatest Royal rumble title. It looks like a giant arcade token. Yeah, yeah, it, it doesn't look good. But I think the that, side that plates are blank. Like the side plates are blank. It looks like. Yeah, like, yeah. And, I, they, and they, they I was replacing those. They cheapened out. I, yeah. I was hoping that the side plates were blank because there's one point during the week where the rules are suspended, so that each champion gets their name etched very oh. tiny. On the thing, just like oh, the Stanley Cup. Stanley Cup, just like the Stanley Cup. I think that'd be great. Now, I would love to see it. I mean, again, I kind of like Dave because it's laying people who are not on TV be on TV. Mm-hmm. Mainly, they look like morons, but at least they're getting their faces <laughs> on TV. Well, that's Monday night. Wait, 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 wait. When every tonight. When everyone was running towards truth, Sami Zayn would just standing there watching everyone going, but, huh? But see, that's your entire all... problem with it. Oh, no, no, that's what I'm saying. That, that's that's what I don't problem. like about it. That's why I don't like about it. I want an internet only title. Oh, are you saying there should be an internet championship that only can be won A with the ref and B, live stream on Instagram. Mm. Well, or how YouTube. About, how about, or YouTube. How about live on the WWE Network? Uh, no, no I, because I honestly, think... that's what Zack Ryder should have done in NXT. Mm-hmm. He, yeah. Because when Zack Ryder was in NXT, he should have brought back the Internet Championship because guess what? The only way you can watch NXT is on the Internet. internet. It's the new wave television title. Like, that's what it is. Yeah. Mm. Or if you're going to do something, say, give it a like a five minute. If you want to make it more of a traditional match and not just craziness, because I'm sure they can write craziness for two weeks. And then they run out of good ideas. Oh, if you think those segments are written, (laughs) they're not. Go do stuff. Go through the, those. See what you come well, well, I, I, I'm going back to the old 24 seven where, you know, the skit of, Oh, I'll give you a massage. All of a sudden, I think it was ivory who won the belt that way by giving someone a massage and, mm-hmm. and pinning them. Yep. That, just those little skits. I'm, I'm yes. not talking big, yeah. right? Just the yeah. little skits. They're going to run out of ideas because they're writing what? Six, seven, eight, eight hours of programming well, a week. That's ideally, generous. Ideally, That's generous. Hopefully. There may be six to seven, six, six to seven hours of programming a week. They ain't writing that much. Ideally, hopefully, <laughs> this is going to be something that like those guys can step up with, right? Like we remember Crash Holy and all the weird stuff that happened but, there. But I mean, it's not. It, I know it's not what you want, yeah. but it's a re- it's a reason for somebody to get on television. I think Drake but, Maverick has been like freaking amazing and, and oh, yeah. sticking out for this also but, an opportunity for them to continue to create content online i think this i'm hoping this does become your internet championship that you're talking mm-hmm. about dave uh yeah. so i mean it, it's it it, it has like i see a lot of potential but again like i told mike last night on the facebook stream um i think i don't think there's going to be a place for this title in a month from now but like here's the thing there, there's no there's no reason to carry this championship. Why would anyone want it? Yeah, it's kind of a no. I, thing, I'm yeah. I'm serious. Like the hardcore championship had a lineage before the twenty four seven rule. Uh, like yeah, no, it did, it did, and main eventers held that motherfucker. The Undertaker is a former hardcore champion. Right. People forget that, right. but he is. Right. Like main eventers went after that title. There were WrestleMania matches dedicated to the hardcore championship. Like, and not just 
the one that everyone remembers from WrestleMania 2000, mm-hmm. where the Mean Street Posse won their first match. Yep. It was there were matches beyond that. Like the only reason that the 24/7 rule existed, and I said this last night, was because it was Crash Holly's idea. It wasn't always 24/7. That was the no. point of it. No. Like, are, do you think we will ever? And I'm saying ever see a scheduled match, a scheduled match for the 24 seven title, because I don't think so. There could be an incident where if somebody comes out and challenges, perhaps um, I want to get to the chat room here real quick. Um, but uh, do, 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 do. Kina saying maybe a beat the clock title could be something unique. Uh, also, Kyle says they need a futures championship for newer talents. And uh, and have it be for uh, talent called up. If they hold the title for five defenses, they can challenge the Intercontinental U.S. Champion. I, I was wondering about that too because I, I'm seeing a lot of these titles keep to get other title shots kind of situations. With uh, you know, I'm thinking, you know, the what was the Aztec Championship in Lucha Underground? Yeah, give, to, give to the gods. Give to the gods. Thank you. Uh, or you know, there's these contender championships that have been coming up uh, with with uh, some of the groups that we work with here. Uh, in the area, uh, Tina's also saying not a new title, but I like to see an option C thing for the cruiserweight title, similar to the X division did. Uh, there you go, another kind of like upgrade kind of thing. Um, I I don't I never liked the option C thing. No, I mean because it, because it always devalued the X division title. Right, right. It always devalued it. Like you shouldn't have championship belts that give like the gift to the gods is different because. It was prestigious to get the medallions, mm-hmm. and the belt was just a means to get to a title shot. But it was prestigious to get the medallions, right? Right. Like, ugh. but I I never liked the option C thing that TNA did. Mm-hmm. Never enjoyed it. Um, I had one, and it went from my brain because I don't have anything <laughs> left in my brain right now, and sleep. Um. Uh. <laughs> oh, so all right. I'll bring up another idea if you okay. If, I'll, to give you a chance to let your brain catch up, bring back the European title. Ooh, but only uh, have only let it be won by Europeans. There was a good. Uh, uh, There's so, plenty. So there was a good. There's uh, enough people. There was a good one, and, and it made me go down a rat hole last night of looking at the TNA uh, Legends Champion. But but um, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Mike, Mike, yeah, let me let me prove it. Wouldn't it be great? Okay, you know WWE isn't going to get away from your... <laughs> Eric Young has already gone for this belt. Oh, <laughs> Mike, Mike, your 40-plus-year-olds are not going away anytime soon from WWE. They should. I, I know. We, we, can, we can have that conversation. No, you know what? All but... the 40-year-olds can wrestle just in countries we don't want to talk about. Yeah, there's that, too. There you go. <laughs> How about that? Hell, let's just leave them there. They just leave them in the desert. Um. So so there's that. Hi, Mike. Yes. Yeah. D- do you realize how old we are? I'm saying forty year old active wrestlers, Missy. <sighs> which which in which in human yeah, see, life I'm almost is like there myself. <laughs> which is which in human life is like a hundred. Yeah. Exactly. That's right. Okay. <laughs> but what if there was like a legends title? And then that's something for your Goldbergs and your Stings and your Undertakers to fight for in the desert. It's um, called the Universal Championship. Sir. But Seth Rollins has it. But then, yeah, but then, for now. But then, you know, your Goldberg isn't taking that up for several months. So we have a Universal title to do something with. And then, you know, we, we just, you know, fight in the desert for the Legends one. We're just gonna, No, the, because WWE won't do that because they don't like to bring up people's ages. No, they don't like that. They, they will not bring up people. They'll bring up um, experience. Hall of ages. Famer championship. No, because Hall of Famer should not be fucking wrestling. Yeah. Hall of Famer, Hall of Famer should not be wrestling. Yeah, because they... if you're in the Hall of Fame, guess what? You're goddamn retired. The Warrior Award <laughs> Championship. I, I mean, so as large much as that... I would love to see Sue Aitchison... You know, get in the ring. I don't think that's gonna happen anytime soon. <laughs> well, you know. Uh, anyways, uh, well, let us know your answer to your big question on the social media. T- uh, tweet us at Mayhem 
show. Now I'm going to talk to this, talk about somebody really important as I bring up my sheet over here. And as our friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling, our good buddies just hung out with Gan with Alex at Rise with an Eye uh, out there on the West Coast. Pro Wrestling's a wild and crazy art form, and Occupy Pro Wrestling is here to look at what makes it fun. Uh, featuring articles, blogs, and a podcast that brings you interviews with fellow fans, Occupy Pro Wrestling is putting the smart back in smart mark. Please go check it out at OccupyProWrestling.com. And I understand there is a new, a new Jakar in 15 podcast. Go check that out. He covers, he covers and previews even the Jakara Pittsburgh show coming up this weekend that I believe uh, a couple of us Mayhemers may be attending. So uh, really cool that all that's all kind of connecting in a really cool way. Um, also, I understand... There is something in the works on re- the return of the Occupy Pro Wrestling podcast. I think something is scheduled. I think something is happening. And I think some- somebody um, that is a friend of the show is going to be involved with uh, on that. So go check out that. There's stuff coming. New, The new new is happening at OccupyProWrestling.com. All right. Mike. Hey. Sork. Yes. Or one thing I want to bring up one thing real quick. Sorry, but uh, about the twenty four seven one, not so serious and one serious, not so serious. We better see King Maxwell. <laughs> we better see King Maxwell, and I want him weighing it off of uh, Matt. No, I want I want him being Drake Maverick for it. <laughs> Let's Second, rekindle that rivalry. <laughs> Second. Candice LeRae. Mm-hmm. Just in general? Like a Candice LeRae championship? No, more like <laughs> this know, is a way. Yes, it, it like, yes. Like, they're just going to wear oh, Candice LeRae exactly. like a belt. Yes. I, think you know, I just have a bunch of thumbtacks on it. <laughs> but no, th- think this is the chance for intergender where it's somewhat legitimate. They but can, it's not going to be taken seriously. It's gonna be. Know, it's gonna be Mighty Molly slapping Hurricane with a frying pan. You know what? You know what? Yeah. Midget Wrestling Championship. Let's just go all the way. Rambling Rabbit for first champion. There you go, <laughs> uh, Kyle. The Road Agent Championship. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's going. called the Universal Championship. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um. Anyways, so uh, there is another company running this weekend. There is. Double or nothing. Our friend of the show, Britt Baker, is going to be a part of that. So I had to put that out there. And I understand. Did anybody see what was going on that they 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 already gave away the match of oh boy of uh, uh, Hangman Page and 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 um, was it Pac? Pac? Yeah. What is happening? Yeah. There? Uh, no one knows the full story. Um, the the prevailing rumor is, and we all know how much wrestling loves their rumors was that um they didn't they wanted to have like kind of a screwy finish like with a dq or time limits or stuff like that yeah but the people running double or nothing didn't want those things on their pay-per-view okay so they decided not to have it on the pay-per-view um guys this is a heads up when you book a show you should no, hear me out. You get to pick the winners, mm-hmm. and y- you have to have winners, mm-hmm. especially when the first announced match for your show now doesn't happen on your show. So people can say, "Oh, yeah, they got TNT now. Great." I'm like, let's wait to see a product. Let's wait to see a product before. Someone with a top knot goes all like, "Ooh, Brock's the future of the business." Yeah, let's see what you're all are doing, buddy. Uh-huh. Let's let's uh let's see what's going on first. Like, I'm not like, don't get me wrong, I'm not really a current fan of the WWE product, but I know it is incredibly hard to do to come up with that much content. Right. So, I'm not going to say they're trying their best. I'm not even going to say they're trying. I'm just saying <laughs> it's hard to do. If you can't pick a winner for your first marquee match, 
and decide to give it away for free on YouTube. Not a great look. <laughs> so I'm catching up a little bit. This is actually an article on Forbes magazine. Yeah, on Forbes.com. Oh. Well, it's because, With they have, it's because they have a legit billionaire involved. It is. like, And the headline is, Double or Nothing 2019, politics already reeling its ugly head as Pac versus Adam Page is next. This is not a dirt sheet, unless Forbes is not what I'm thinking it is. Uh, no, no it, it's what you think. Well, is, you know what? This could also be the nothing portion of the Double or Nothing show. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Um but uh, so so this was over, you know, and they're having discussion in here about uh, creative differences between Page and Pac. Uh, top match advertised for this. They ran an angle overseas at an event in Nottingham, England. I believe that is the match that they showed, ending in disqualification. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, this is curious, and it does give me a little bit of pause for what's going on here if they couldn't deliver on something like this. Like I heard, it was because Pac was still a champion for another company. Right, and they and they didn't want him to like lose. I'm like, guess what? When you don't sign people to exclusive deals or keep them locked in their contracts, these are the kinds of things that happen. Right, right. So right. maybe let's not give another company a lot of grief for not letting people do. It that. is it's something they're going to have to sort out sooner than later, and mm-hmm. hopefully, this is just early growing pains. Well, let me ask you because Growing Pains got a lot better once they had Leonardo DiCaprio. That's all I said. <laughs> I don't. Okay. What, what, what Show me this? that smile again. Wow. Sorry. Off the rails. Potter, Potter, please state your case and please okay. don't sing. Oh, no. Don't worry. I, I won't do that to anyone. But I remember the buildup. Uh, like saying page one page said he wanted to be the first champion. And I hear interviews with him saying, are you ready for all the, you know, the stress and everything that comes outside the ring? He said, Oh, I want to be. So how are they handling the championship? Does anyone have, any, are, are they not just going to have a champion on their first big show? Or are they um, going to have another match? So... Are they between? So, so I, I don't know. to clarify a little bit on the championship thing, I, I'm, I'm running through the card right now, and there is going to be a AAA World Tag Team Championship between the Lucha Brothers and the Young Bucks. Who are yeah, now, that's oh, AAA. That's not their title. Right. There, yeah. is, there is no AEW championship. And a lot of promotions, a lot of promotions do not run a Revenge Pro who started like last summer. And again, we're talking about an Indian you know, localized uh, still does not have a championship, but has had other championships defended on their show. This is not, I mean, there's a lot of this concept happening right now, right? For new companies and, you know, building things up. I mean, Rise with a Y uh, had uh, 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 probably at least a year of shows, if not longer, before they unveiled their first championship, just unveiled tag team championships a couple of months ago. Uh, I think, and I think AEW is kind of going through that playbook as well right now. Hmm. I uh, I don't see that. I mean, you want to know who the top dog is, you know, well, who, who's your top performer. And yeah, I know, you know, for the last year, we know that for WWE, we don't care who has the title, you know, it, they've been put before the cancer scare. Roman was your top guy, mm-hmm. but for something brand new, you need to have something. And it just can't be, well, it's obviously it's Cody because he's one behind the scenes running it. Well, we saw what right. happens when you run it behind the scenes and you're the top talent. Right. It, it well, doesn't turn out good. To be fair, you don't necessarily need a main title on your first show. You don't necessarily. Uh, right. Lucha Underground went a couple months See, without having even a hint of a championship. I would, uh, I would, I would, pause, but, uh, I would pause until they have the television started to see where they go with it. And this is kind of the thought that I'm going to chime in here with too. Is I agree that you don't really need it at the outset mm-hmm. because you're going to have those belts for a while, mm-hmm. or you, you're hoping to have those belts for a while. So having them quality made, you want to make sure that you have the time and attention to make sure that they are exactly what you want to have to represent not only your brand, mm-hmm. but also 
that specific title. And I don't think I don't think that you know cost is not an issue for AEW, but no, but, but also to build to those titles to make them like, hey, we're here when we have a belt. And that's exactly what I'm and going. These two guys are going to fight. That's where I'm going with it. Is mm-hmm. you want to make sure that it is as prestigious as possible. So you're going to build as much hype going into it. And you're going to make it this huge thing that, yes, we have been building this roster mm-hmm. for, you know, the last few months. You've seen some of what we have going on. Everybody's fighting to get to the top. And we're going to give this them this amazing coronation where we roll out the, you know, these brand new shiny belts. And we finally, you know, this is what you've been fighting for. Yeah. And then you just throw it in the ring and let a bunch of jobbers fight over who grabs it, right? <laughs> That's what yep. you do. Yep. <laughs> but, like, I, they don't need a championship right away, but they do need to deliver on what they promise. Mm. And already, that, like, there, there's talks of insurance for wrestlers. That doesn't seem like it's happening now. Mm-hmm. Oh, like, really? The, well, I just in ge- because like the insurance for wrestlers, they're talking about like a union thing, which is never going to happen. Well, and the other problem that you have with insurance for wrestlers is there are some, probably some complications involved with it. And I know, like, I'm I'm speaking from the fact that we film wrestlers, and there are certain requirements within our insurance policies mm-hmm. that we have to have in place. Mm-hmm. We're not in the ring. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, and at that level, and those the, that, yeah, that, no. those quality of stars, you know, they, that that's in our thing. And say, so I I don't know what they have planned for that. This is this is business stuff, and hence why I'm looking at an article in Forbes. dot com about. Yeah, but this you're company. also looking at stuff that they've talked about mm-hmm. at their big expensive press conferences, yeah. where they have pyro and shit. Like the they're putting this all out for us. Like, they're telling us all of this. Mm-hmm. So, if they don't seem to be delivering on it, it's fair criticism. Mm-hmm. Like, the the first match they've already touted is off the show. That that's that was the one. first match they announced. Yeah. That was the yeah. first match they announced. Mm-hmm. So, they're essentially, they're, they're an indie fed with a television deal. Oh, no. Don't, don't, give, is... don't give Mike that ammunition. <laughs> Until I'm proven otherwise, their impact, their impact on Spike, yeah, going on Monday nights, kind like of. until until I'm proven otherwise, that's all it is. This is not is this is not an entire WCW like, situation. They, they literally hired New Age Outlaws to be the road agents. Like <laughs> we don't need these Wait, old. Did, we did Billy they, Gunn did works they, for them. Wait, the Billy Gunn did they did they get Road Dog? No Road Dog. They might have by now. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. He was they boy. might have by now because he left WWE. Did he but, leave? Leave. I I heard he just was changing positions well, to a more at large situation. Regardless, they have Billy Gunn. Yeah. So you can guarantee his Billy son is going to be on AEW. His Billy's son. Yeah, his son wrestles. Yeah. Oh. Well, I, yeah. They should call him yeah. Billy. They should call him Billy's son. Billy's son. But that's another thing. I, but, I, uh, I, but like. Like, we don't need old people thinking mm. of how to run a new wrestling promotion. We need young people. That's why Cody shouldn't fucking wrestle. If he yeah. wants to run a promotion, he should run a promotion. He should not run it and be the main event of the show. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll see how that kind of uh, works out there between, you know, the owners of the company and how high profile matches. Like, we have enough owners of the companies on wrestling shows. Mm -hmm. Shane McMahon had, like, five segments in the past week. Jeff Jarrett and TNA. Jeff Jarrett and TNA. This is why I'm saying, like, they have to show me otherwise. If the Young Bucks are the first tag team champions, I'm calling it into question. If Kenny or Cody are the first main champions, I'm calling it into question. Mm -hmm. Like, show me something different. So I don't know if I want to get into because some people are going crazy because we are not used to paying for our pay per views anymore. Uh, Oh yeah, the fifty dollars a pop, which is Uh, standard for a pay per view these days. eh, Not really. Really? Why? What is a wrestling pay per view otherwise? If I bought a WWE pay per view, if it was available on on, how much is ROH? 
I last, it ain't fifty. It's like thirty five, maybe. There you go. And that's it, a bit. That's and, a bit better. And that is point. now. Now those have been fight TVs, and I don't know. Well, I want to try to pull up Fight TV and see if I can get some general pricing information. You cannot get it on Fight TV in America, I understand, but it is going to be on Bleacher Report Live. So, what the fuck is that? I mean, I've heard of Bleacher Report. They have yeah, I've heard of Bleacher Report. Yeah, 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 I've never heard of Live um, though. Actually, so they, they it's their own pay per view service. They have a lot of sports in there. Actually, when I went up to Long Island for that uh, Triton Fights MMA deal, uh, that mm-hmm. was that was live on Bleacher Report. So this is their pay-per-view. They, they basically have, have fan down there doing their own pay-per-view, uh, their own fight TV, basically. Oh, and apparently uh, Ty, the former Ty Dillinger is going to be yeah. in. Yeah, Nothing. Sean Spears is going to be in there, too. Yeah. Um, I also love that uh, going to, um, I just went to fight TV, and, and uh, one of our Sorgatron media releases, or indie wrestling releases, uh, AJ Styles, The Missing Matches, is on the front page. That's fun to see. Uh, so <laughs> that's cool. Uh, so, anyways, um, so let's see. GCW presents Backyard Wrestling. What? Yeah, but it looks like the only way to watch it is through pay per view. Yeah. Yeah, it's not going to be through. I mean, but it, it, like, how do they not have a deal with at, at least Twitch? Um, or something you to know? put it out for like, free on Twitch when you're trying to sell a pay per view. Hey, you know what? Their owner is worth enough. They're looking for exposure for this. Uh, I think they're, they're also looking at it as a business too. I, I can't. I can't get the thing that. now. But the thing for fifty dollars now. No, the network is ridiculously cheap. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, it, it is underpriced for for all you're right, getting. Right, and then we're, we have, but, don't say we, that too loud. I know, I know, <laughs> we're gonna get less. I know, I know. Tier, I know. I've heard the rumors for the last what year now about tiered pricing and everything. Mm-hmm. But, but one thing I love about the network is that oh, I can't make it for the entire show. I can watch it later. I remember traditional pay-per-view. Unless you set up your VCR. I'm, I know I'm going old here. You want, oh, something happened. You can't watch the pay-per-view live. Guess what? You're going to have to pay again to watch it. And who, I mean, I don't know how long this, the pay-per-view is scheduled for. I'm assuming three hours. Three hours, yeah. Three so hours. It starts at eight. So, But I mean, that's a long time still to say so. you're sitting down for three hours and no, don't get up because you won't be able to rewind it. Now, you won't be able to watch it later or anything else. I mean, and now, now, you know, aside from pay-per-view itself, if, and, I, and I don't know if this is on standard pay-per-view. Um, it looks it, like direct TV is. and dish, which right. means I can't even watch it if right. I wanted to. Well, it, it's a scatter shot anyways with these presentations. So yeah. by comparison, I'm on Fight TV and I'm looking at Ring of Honor Best in the World, which would be, would it be one of their classic pay-per-view events. It is for $34.99. Now on this, mm-hmm. on this, uh, Dave, if you do rent that for uh, $34.99, you are going to get unlimited replay. So you do like own it. Right. Right, right, and, and most of these do. Let's see, Rise Luminous. I was uh, the the pay per view that I attended on on Friday. That is there again, nine ninety nine includes unlimited replays. We're doing the same thing on our pay per views uh, for Indie Wrestling Us. Right. We're, we're actually just linking you to the VOD uh, afterwards uh, for that uh, through the other system. But um, it, it's still, uh, it's uh, you know, it, it it's it, it's a different level, I think. A lot of people are going to choke on that, and I don't know what that's going to do for them. They did very well last time, but also uh, all in last time. Last time it was more organic. All in was also on, um, I think, both Honor Club and New Japan World. Yep. So it did have that WWE Network buy-in, right? For for a few bucks, you know, I, I got to see it for under ten bucks through New Japan World, right? Um, so. I don't know what that's going to do for this. Uh, you know, it's it's a different kind of math at this point. There are there are people that will gladly drop fifty dollars for this thing for the people that's on. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, let's let's be honest about it. Um, and this is a first thing, and and it's in its building, and it's going to set the stage. And who knows? Maybe this is a thing that it's going to be on now, and maybe when they uh, go 
uh, as part of their TV deal. Maybe we'll get this uh, just broadcast on TNT one night. I no way. No, absolutely no way. Never know. Absolutely no way. You know who would do that? TNA. <laughs> yeah, or maybe we'll be on a forthcoming Twitch channel. Who knows? Who knows? I. Well, either way, we will know after this weekend between that lot of pay-per-view. They do have a lot of shirts on their site, though. So. Yeah, they do have a lot of shirts on there. Really good they have at a shirts, lot of shirts and Hot Topic and everything like that. Uh, anyways, no, get... not even Hot Topic anymore because that was part of a New Japan deal. Oh, no. Ooh. Like, I, I see both. How Joey Ryan like, get in there? I don't know. I don't see Joey Ryan shirts at Hot Topic. There used to be. Mm, used to be. Uh, I think these deals that they're signing are they're, allowed to independently. Because they're bringing back Jinkos and going back to the old hot topic we talked about last week. Anyway, Scarehouse, our good friends, speaking of spooky things. Uh, hey, it's not. It's more than just Halloween for those guys on there. Uh, the Scarehouse, Scarehouse.com. Get some great behind-the-scenes content and discussions with other haunters and creatives. With the Scarehouse Podcast over at scarehousepodcast.com, hosted by our friend Dutters over there. While you're there, please sure to get uh, to follow them up on social media and get all the updates. So, at that point, oh boy, I'm jet lagged so bad. Uh, let's get my mouth working. And uh... <laughs> they have 23 different shirts, Sorg. 23 different shirts. I saw a Britt Baker. I saw a Britt Baker shirt. I think it was a Blackcraft one though. Uh, of uh, when I was in Detroit, I was in uh, the person next to him had a. I think maybe a Bull Club or All In. Dude, I got off the plane and and I got my bag at LAX last Thursday, and I saw a gentleman. With a dream in a card again. Mm. No. Uh, and and I see a gentleman. I I walk out and I see a guy. He's wearing a Fozzie hat and a Bull Club uh sweater. Was it Chris Jericho? It was not Chris Jericho. No. Are uh, you sure? So, <laughs> um, was he drinking Grey Goose? If he was drinking Grey Goose at the airport, Chris like Jericho. like waiting yes. for the car, like the bus. Yes. I don't yes. know about that. Um, <laughs> Tina saying I've read his books <laughs> with Twitch. You can tip and uh, and uh, do subscriptions too. Yeah, and we're and we're working on uh, uh, with indie wrestling, uh, building up our Twitch following too. So if you're not watching indie wrestling on Twitch, please go follow us and like us and watch that and chat and everything over there uh, there's a lot of great wrestling happening on the indie wrestling.us twitch stream uh it's which you can use your amazon prime towards one free subscription like i use mine towards three to one battle oh there's that too mm-hmm. um but uh a lot of good stuff there so what was it oh hey hey <laughs> what did you learn in wrestling this week chat room people with us on the line <laughs> anybody Anywhere oh across the I country. Know? Just using my words. <laughs> I learned. Jeez, where do I start? Um, I because I did see two wrestling shows. Like I said, I saw the World of Wrestling uh, tapings, and I did get to attend the Rise with an Eye Luminous Eye pay per view uh, over there uh, Thursday and Friday, and then I just like didn't have energy to drive anywhere for more wrestling to be honest after work but anyways uh, i got those in um i learned uh i i i learned i learned that every every wrestling show needs needs crowd fluffers uh we um, what we've talked about this with ring of honor mike we t- attended Ring of Honor shows and there's that one guy that's always starting the chance right uh for that's indep- not good no no we do not need more of those assholes. No, 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 no. <laughs> They're the ones that are starting it and banging on the on the uh, on the. Uh, uh, you mean yeah, people paid by more. the promotion? They're, no. the, they're the people that that start the chance, get the get the energy up. You know, especially no, we, when you're we recording that. The, what do you mean they don't need that? No, they don't need that. They need reasons <laughs> to chant, not just following some asshole. Um, we're talking about TV tapings here, Mike. Uh, and, still and, though, what's that? Still though, uh, I, I I attended the the women of wrestling uh, uh taping and and they were like in full effect. And again, this is a very tight kind of uh television taping situation, right? And okay, for something like that, okay. Like but they, they Ring of Honor they, doesn't need them. No, 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 no. Well, Ring, Ring of Honor, Honor has taping? one. Okay, Ring of Honor has one. Okay, 
And that's fine. And he starts stuff and gets people going, and, and that's okay. In independent wrestling, we have Heel Bradley, okay? I still <laughs> I still poise that independent prof- independent promotions should hire Bradley just to start chance um, to get the crowd going, uh, some more than others. But anyways... Um, you know, it, it was it was they, they they had the thunder sticks with the women of wrestling that they handed out to, and it was just a really cool thing. It was at this theater, uh, the Blasco in uh, in uh, in uh, I think it was Southgate in California, towards downtown there. And uh, it, it I I showed up late uh, because I was uh, on you know the reason I went to California uh, for work. I finished and drove down as soon as I could. And again, thanks Raylan for uh, hooking me up with the ticket for that. Um, but I uh, showed up like a little bit after eight o'clock, still got about two hours of wrestling in. And I think they started at like maybe six 30. Right. And, uh, and, and, and it was just a really cool effect of that. They were, you know, pe- and again, television, there were like, you know, people running around and filling in seats as people would leave through the evening and everything. Uh, you might see me with a good times at wrestling ma'am show, uh, shirt on the entrance way, uh, towards the end of the season when they do their championship match. Uh, so, but I will not spoil that because I don't know. I, well, you know, I, I, I don't know how, how heavy on spoilers they are for women of wrestling versus Lucha Underground, it Mike. It was Brand Stark the whole time. It was what? It was Brand Stark. Yeah, it was Brand Stark the whole time as the new uh, women of wrestling champion. Uh, anyways, uh, so, but I think these are going to air starting in September from what I understand these, these tapings they did this last week um so look out for that but um no it was it was a lot of fun to see that and 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 again they would run and and you know there's the there's the the stands in the back and and they're trying to get going but you know if you haven't watched women wrestling it's got that glow feel to it it's a tighter um uh studio ish feel to it uh, a, a bit too but again great wrestling i learned that women wrestling has great wrestling and it's not just the super cheese of the first uh, few episodes that I tried watching and, and didn't really get into it. But like you have your Jessica Havoc, you got Jesse Bell Smothers, you got Raylan, you got, uh, 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 of course, Tessa Blanchard, I believe, is their champion as of at the end of the season uh, going into what I saw uh, this week. Uh, you had Holodead was there. Um, a lot of great women's wrestling uh, on there. It's not just kind of the super characters um, that's there. But um, uh, what's there? Hogan. Um that that was in uh, uh, Impact Wrestling. What? Kira? Kira oh, Kira, Kira Hogan. Kira, Kira Hogan. Hogan. Thank you. You got me real confused for a second. I'm like, <laughs> Brooke Hogan Brooke? is a part of this. No, no. Brooke Hogan. <laughs> It's because worthwhile. Hogan was an Impact Wrestling sword. It's worthwhile. It was a lot of fun, and it also interesting to go from that to a Rise A pay per view the next night. That was a very different thing in like a Foreign Legion post. On iPay pay per view with one camera and like not wow. much production to speak of, but Gail Kim and Jimmy Jacobs from Impact Wrestling were there doing the production. So you know it was just like like very separated things. Uh, it it was very interesting to see that uh, 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 kind of dichotomy between two days of women's wrestling. Really, so that's what I learned in general. A lot more I could probably talk about. I, I shared some pictures and images and thoughts. Over on the Wrestling Man Show Facebook group, and if you have any, if you want to have any comments or questions on that, please let me know. Dave Potter, what did you learn from wrestling this week? I learned, even though I initially disliked the twenty four seven title mm-hmm. and felt pity for Mick Foley, mm-hmm. after seeing two, uh, well, let's say a full episode plus of Our Truth, <laughs> I want more. I want more. I want more truth, and I want more Drake Maverick. So did, it's did, uh, if I can get more of those two, being a little, hopefully less constrained, then I'm happy with it. it looks like the cats are under. Happier, no, I was gonna say it looks like the cats are fighting no for the, They're fighting for the 24 mm-hmm. championship. Yeah, that's right. The- that's right. Tell me, don't spoil who got it. But our truth, make it out of the night with the, with the belt. I believe he did. Well, when I last I checked on it, he did. This is a by the minute, like kind of. Oh, yeah. yeah. And like, by where, the way, where am I going to get where am I, I'm going to get a message through the WWE app somewhere that um, that freaking uh, 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 Razor from AOP just won the belt from yeah. from uh, uh, Justin Gabriel. Wait, no, he's wow. not in there. Wow. That was a no. Nope. You know, what? why not? Justin Gabriel in like a Wendy's in, in Tulsa. Uh, I. I said this last night. I'll say it again. If we don't get a title change for that thing during ride along, 
what the fuck is the point of this title? <laughs> That's right. That's right. During right. Hell, I want it during table table for three. <laughs> I, well, I, I want that. That'd be great. Well, so actually, like, I, like the like you see the waiter come in, the faceless waiters, but it turns out it's actually Drake Maverick, and he smashes a glass in someone's face and pins them for the belt. And then they get back up, like, oh, that was unfortunate. So where were we? So about your career. <laughs> hey, can I get some more steak? <laughs> I'm just so good. Kevin Nash wasn't eating ravioli on his. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, all right. Uh, so I I learned this week oh boy i i learned that alex cars ruined a good thing oh no Mm -hmm. what was i had a match lined up for mayhem mania Uh (laughs) uh-huh it was it was the match i had initially wrote down back in october and we finally got last night on raw and everyone's like oh this was so great on raw like guess what we could have had months earlier on Mayhem Mania with Ricochet versus Cesaro. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, Alex Cars, I'm still coming after you next year for Mayhem Mania. Comes for you, you will sucker. not get. You will not get a single match graduated. Oh no! Oh no! Yep, it's the revenge play. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh yeah, I I'm a spiteful bitch. <laughs> Missy, what'd you learn? You were at wrestling this weekend up in Erie. Oh, I had so much and fun you, wrestling. You were Erie. drinking with wrestlers with Dutters. That's I'm what sure I was, you, you learned a lot oh of stuff. Boy. Probably that's what oh I was gonna boy. say. Is I learned so much stuff with Dutters this weekend that's at a, a wrestling podcast. show, and we had to sign a freaking NDA. Wait, what? Or not? Uh, yeah, we, we had to sign NDAs. Wow! All, all I can say is Jackson Argos is doing some freaking amazing stuff, and then he told us that we weren't allowed to tell anybody. What the hell? You didn't even tell me because I wasn't allowed. What the hell? Hold no, I'm on, just, hold, I'm on totally, hold on. We totally can riddle kidding. this out. We can riddle this out. I'm totally kidding. What? What is famous <laughs> in Canada? <laughs> bacon. Canada. But no. Canadian bacon. <laughs> no. I I want. I think I got it. Jackson Argos is franchising Tim Hortons. Oh my god, that would be ridiculous. I was gonna say Jackson Argos is in the gritty remake of Strange Brew. No, actually, actually, we we got a bunch of like behind the scenes, like behind the scenes, behind the scenes stories that I just cannot repeat for specific reasons. But uh, no, it was it was really great. Um, I learned that Dutters. I learned that the next time we're in Erie for Revenge Pro, if you go to Erie, first off. Go to Erie for a Revenge Pro show. They were amazing. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Secondly, make sure that you go to the after party. But when you go to the after party, make sure that you go to the after after party. Also, also, if you're... <laughs> the, the after, wait, wait. The after after party? Ooh. Yeah. After the Didn't show is the after party, then after the party is... No, I wasn't party. invited to the after after party. Yes, you, yes, we were. I was exhausted. Or I was already I drunk at that, that show. Oh, wait. Is that, is, that what the, <laughs> is that the part where everybody gets on the bus? Yes. Did you guys get on the bus? We did not get on the bus, but the bus started a block away, so we went to that bar, and it was amazing. Oh, jeez. Oh, and boy. I need to, I, there are stories that I need to tell you from this after we get off air. Oh, boy. Here we go. Oh, um, I, yeah. Uh, by the way, if, if you guys are, the mayhem is out there, I know you guys are all over the place, and we, we, we talk about a lot of stuff, and you, maybe you've seen some clips. If you want to see Revenge Pro on iPay-Per-View, let us know, because we're poking at stuff. Um and they do a lot of great hey, stuff up there in here. As long as you don't charge forty nine ninety five, we will probably not. We no, we're probably not charge forty nine. We're charging forty four ninety nine. Yes, hey, that's much. Ooh. That's a much better price point. You're already beating AEW. But you can check out the Angel Gate show this weekend for nine ninety nine on iPay Per View over information on IndieWrestling US. Just gonna slide those in wherever I can. Uh there was in the chat. I'm in the wrong. Somehow I opened the stream for the indie indywrestling.us and now i'm in chats there was one i think brandon was talking about how uh he had actually uh designed a logo for another pod wrestling podcast that you I to. cheating bastard. no 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 <laughs> no 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 i'm kidding we I'm encourage kidding. all creative we are not confrontational with other wrestling podcasts I absolutely Every, there's different there's different flavors of ice cream man Wait, Wait, we have ice cream? No, we don't have ice cream. It's a it's a figure. Are we of sponsored speech. by ice cream sword? No, we're not sponsored by ice cream. 
I want ice cream. If Wrestling Mayhem I show, scream, you scream. We all scream ice if cream. If Wrestling Mayhem Show had a Ben and Jerry's flavor, what would it be? Oh my god. That's no, oh, that's no, 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 no. Hold that nugget. That's going to be the big question next week. That's yep. Hey, email yep. us. Um oh, from the chat. Oh man, we lit up oh, the chat room so with that stuff. I, Oh, so All right, from the chat room, from the chat room, uh, Kyle says, Drake Maverick versus Sid Scala for the uh, 24-7 title. I don't know that, that reference. No, I, I, um, no. Jackson Argos is going to create the Tim Hortons championship. Yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, our friend uh, Alex. And only Occup- defend it against a dozen people at a time. Our uh, Occupy Pro Wrestling, Alex Carr says, learn that Mike Quackenbush is doing 25 matches for his 25 wrestle anniversary. Oh, really? Jeez. Whoa! Also learned that not every wrestling event can have a happy ending. See Money in the Bank. Um, also, I think it's illegal in this country. Uh, but uh, let's see. Kyle yeah. learned that Game of Thrones and Money in the Bank were both ended with a useless bastard winning. <laughs> um, um, last but not least. Hey, hey, to be fair, to be fair, John didn't win, and he's the bastard. Hmm. <laughs> Um, Occupy also says, last but not least, I learned that if you peek in on a live video as a Facebook page after being tagged in a comment, you will comment as the live video as the Facebook page. Yes. Uh, I scream on Broadway. Um, let's see other people watching with you. No, no, that's a, that's a different comment. Kyle says, I got the, I got a winner for this one. Smorgatron. Smorgatron. Oh, Smorgatron. Yeah. For, for the ice cream. Wow. Guys, thank you. That's that's pretty good. Wrestling Mayhem Show. A lot of stuff going on, of course. And uh, also, I am looking for recommendations. I will be in Michigan uh, the first week of Ju- weekend of June. And I will be in Rochester, New York. Uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan, uh, to clarify. And I'll be in Rochester, New York the second weekend of June. I'm looking for wrestling because I want to have a complete mayhem across America. And also, if anybody can let me know if indie wrestling exists in Nebraska, period. <laughs> so I think that's going to be the showstopper for me uh, this season. Uh, good news, I'm going to California for that next year instead of Nebraska. So last run out there. Uh, anyways, if there's anything pro wrestling in Nebraska, I don't care if like if there's a pro wrestler in Nebraska that I can meet, I, I, I'm happy with that. Uh, I'll buy him a hamburger at Lincoln's. I don't care. <laughs> Anyways, um, PWP. PWP, you found one? Omaha's Pro Wrestling. Oh, PWP. That's like, I don't know if it still exists. <laughs> yeah, that's that's another problem I'm finding when I, I found when I on Facebook. Oh, they they have a show. They had a show Wednesday, May 22nd. Oh, well, let's see if they're swinging down to Lincoln, Nebraska. Yeah, they yeah. They, they have a show tomorrow night. There you go. Tomorrow, tomorrow night, night. Uh, yeah, tomorrow night, May twenty second. Um, I recognize none of these people. No, nope. I don't think it, a lot of people are going to travel out there. Um, th- they have what's called a Rising Phoenix Championship. Wait a minute. Yep. Mm-hmm. A Rising Phoenix Championship, think... and the current champion is someone named Moonshine Russell. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Nebraska wrestling to me. Mad Mike, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, Sork. Dave Bonner of the Tiny Shutter Podcast for all your iPhone camera needs. Thanks so much for having me, Sork. Thank you for coming on. And, of course, thank you, producer Missy, the award-winning producer Missy. I'm going to keep saying that. She has one that I bought. Uh, thank you, everybody in the chat room, for joining us. We'll see you next time. Mayhem out. Wait, just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Wait for the perfect time. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.